Hey everyone, thanks for watching. In this video, I have both the wall mount and the desk stand version of the WebEx Room Navigator tablet. It is the successor to the uh, Touch 10 tablet, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, we're gonna unbox both of these guys, both the desk and the wall mount version, take a look at the similarities, the differences, and uh, kind of go from there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's dive in and check it out. To kick things off, I'm gonna open up the table stand version first. Uh, you can see it came right in a box. It's pre-packaged uh, and laying in there nice and secure. There is a getting started document here that you can certainly take a look at. It covers a number of different languages, how to put it together, uh, all of that fun stuff. Pretty basic document. And then uh, there are some directions on how to find additional information on the Cisco website. With that out of the way and the regulatory document out of the way, you simply pop this guy out of the box. You can see on the back here, it has a uh, ethernet port. This is actually PoE to power the device and to uh, connect it to your video endpoint. Basically the same way that the Touch 10 worked. One thing that is different is there is not a, a, a leg, if you will, that's part of it. So what you do is get out the, uh, the stand piece here, remove the little wrapper that protects the logo, and there are two and one separate notches. They kind of just match right up here, um, and you can snap this guy right into place. I'm not gonna snap it on yet. You see there's actually a hole in the back to uh, run the ethernet cable through. So you have that. So you can actually use the ribbon cable with your Touch 10 to connect this if you swap it out. If you order an endpoint that comes with one of these guys, it's gonna have a cable uh, with it as well. With the table stand version put together, let's take a look at the wall mount. Similarly, it has a getting started installation document. This actually talks about how to install on a wall. You can actually fasten this to drywall, to a box, you can mount it to, uh, you can actually stick it to a glass wall as well with some uh, clear adhesive. Talks about all that fun stuff in this document, so be sure to keep a hold of that. When you pull this out of the box, you will notice there are a couple things that are different. This one does have a back to it. You can see it has, uh, has that built in. So these are two separate devices. You can't buy one to use it for, for both. Um, you'll also notice it has this thin stripe along the bottom. This will actually light green or red if the uh, room is occupied or, or scheduled. On the back, you can see a template here for wall mounting. A couple different hole patterns. There's a slot here to get the cable through. Again, this guy is PoE powered as well. There is a screw here that you need to access. Uh, just a Phillips screw to take the back cover off. I'm actually going to get the screwdriver and we'll take that off. With the back cover removed, you can see there is a Ethernet port, again, PoE powered. There's a little service port way inside there as well. Snap out piece on either side that you can use if you need to run the cable out through as well. And there's ultimately a little notch in the bottom uh, as well. Ideally though, you want to mount this on a wall and bring the cable through the back so that it is completely out of sight. I mentioned mounting this on a glass surface. So here is a piece, it's essentially a big uh, sticker, if you will, that you can use. Uh, it shows you how to uh, peel the adhesive, how to stick it and everything. There's uh, actually a Cisco logo on the back, so if you're looking through the glass at the back of this, you'll see this. So it does a really nice job of keeping that clean and tidy. And then probably what you'll do is through the bottom, you'll just run the cable through the bottom and uh, and kind of route it that way. A little tricky mounting on glass, of course, because you have a cable to manage, but with a single cable for both data and power, uh, you know, it's not bad. I have a Touch 10 connected to my RoomKit Mini. You can see it right there. I have the Navigator tablet right here. You actually can see them side by side. The Navigator is a little bit smaller, but from a screen real estate perspective, it's actually a little bit bigger because there's less you know, frame around it, which is cool. Anyway, let's disconnect the Touch 10, set that out of the way, and we're going to connect the Navigator. Now you see, I went and I put the back on. That's actually not a problem. The trick to getting this off, this is worth the whole video right here. You need to press with your thumb with a fair amount of pressure right on the uh, 
right on the top here and kind of pull it down. You see it has a little tab there. So you have to press that in so that it releases from the, uh, the cache. Then take your cable, send it through the hole in the back, plug it in, and then reattach the little leg stand thing just like that and you're ready to go. It's going to start booting up. When the system first boots it's going to update the software, connect to the room device. Here you can see it's pulling down its software from the room kit uh, right now. We'll give that a second to finish and then dive into it from there. As the navigator connects to the device, you're going to see two different modes. I mentioned earlier, uh, room booking, if this thing is outside the room, or the room controller, if it is replacing you know, the touch 10 use case. In this instance, we're going to use the controller option because again, we're replacing a touch 10. You'll see here, touch panel location, same room as the device is selected by default because again, this is on the desk in front of the device. Setup is done and we are greeted with our familiar touch interface. Uh, again, pretty much a pullover from the Touch 10. You notice a few things that are different. The volume is uh, now a digital button instead of a physical, um, you know, physical set of buttons like we had on the Touch 10. And uh, outside of that, I mean, this thing is pretty much the same thing with a different form factor. I do want to point out though that with this leg on the back, if you wanted to flip the orientation so it stands upright a bit more, it will actually do that as well. Now I have a wall mount navigator here as well. I'm going to step through the same process. We'll hit start. It's going to actually ask me for the IP address of a room because this is not connected to the, I call it the link local port, the, the port that is directly part of the codec. So what I'll do is I'll type in that IP address and hit connect. With the IP address entered, the tablet is gonna go ahead and download a new software image. With the software image loaded, we now have to authenticate to the endpoint. Now you do need a local uh, account on the endpoint for this guy to authenticate if it is not connected directly to the uh, link local port or, or what have you. Um, this is authenticating over the network. So I'm gonna type in the credentials I have set up for that. When we have them typed in, hit log in. You'll notice it actually woke up the uh, tablet and woke the endpoint up. Now what we're gonna do is choose the room booking mode for this device. You can indicate if it is in the same room or outside of the room. And there's some details here about the sensor data that comes from these guys as well. We're gonna do outside the room. Setup is done. You see it show the traditional um, control mode there for a second. Now it's just simply uh, gonna reboot. Um, in this case, touch panel is out of service. The calendar is not configured. So what we'll do is actually configure a calendar and we'll jump back and see if, uh, if anything looks different. Okay, now you can see the calendar is configured. On the endpoint, we have the calendar button. Outside the room, we have a uh, room available. There's no one that has this book. We can actually see the room calendar for the day and it's actually available all day as well. When it's available, the green light is lit. When it's in use, the red light is going to be lit. You have the name of the room at the top, the time, uh, and all that type of stuff that you need to do some calendaring and understand uh, the status of the room, when it's available, when it's not available. I, of course, have only scratched the surface of the capabilities that are new and improved in the Navigator over the Touch 10. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. I'm going to have more videos coming. With that being said, I want to thank you for watching and hope to see you back sometime soon.